Jim here, welcome to the channel. Today's discussion is going to be the shakalaka long hose and why you might want to go in that direction. Stay tuned. Come on, Airshare boy. Why would you opt for a long hose? I've heard a lot of talk when I was back in the guppy days about long hoses for technical, not for recreational, or you've got two different lengths. You got the five, five foot and about the six to seven foot. You know, maybe the five foot is recreational. The six, seven foot is more technical. I'm gonna tell you all about it. So about 10 or 15 years ago, I went to the, I don't know, the long hose, 84 inch long hose and I never turned back. Recreational, technical, whatever it was. I was diving a lot of doubles back then, but now I'm not, I'm still with that hose and I'm still a big believer. And that is the configuration that I usually put people into unless they have a strong preference otherwise. Benefits of a traditional hose system are, are kind of easy. One, if you do still travel and rent a lot, rental gear is always traditional. You know, very rare to see a long hose for rental gear. So training people in a long hose, if they're not gonna buy their equipment right away, I've always has, had mixed feelings about. For air sharing, there are two different camps. There's the camp of donate what you're breathing, and there's the camp of donate some sort of a spare regulator. And generally speaking, right, a spare regulator should be located in that triangle between your, your hips and your, your throat here for a spare regulator. And the downsides of donating a spare, the downsides are, well, you don't use it a lot, so you don't know what the quality is. You don't use it on that dive, you haven't used it, so you really don't know if it's working. Very often, <laughs> they're not treated very well, they're dragged down in the dust. It's very usually in my environment, a lot of people don't secure them. I, I always see like dragging along or hitting rocks and stuff. It, it's just terrible. Also, very often, they're not a very good quality regulator, very, very often. And I can understand that you're saving money. So those are the downsides of, of uh, the donate what you're not breathing. Advantages to donating what you're breathing. So one, it's what you're breathing. You know it's working you know it's working, right? I, I'm, I'm breathing it at the moment, so I, I know it's working. Uh, the disadvantage of that is I'm going to take out my air source for some time until I locate the alternate for myself. So I'm, I'm breaking my, my air chain. The other, I don't know if this is an advantage or disadvantage, but I have heard, but not experienced myself, but it makes a lot of sense that if someone is in a real panic of an air share and they see that regulator in your mouth that's working, that's what they're gonna be going for, right? They're gonna be swimming. No matter what you, you might hold up or, or have in a different location, they're just like fixated on that regulator in your mouth and that's what they're going for anyway. That makes sense to me. The idea with, with the long hose air share is I've got I've got the person, I see, the, I see the signal or I see them coming and I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna donate and then, so my backup is right here, it's gonna be on a necklace and I'm going to bring that to my mouth as I'm still paying attention to what's going on. Two benefits to this. Benefit one, I'm able to get this an arm's length away from my body and that means that there should not be a reason for the diver to come inside this arm's length. What they want is on the outside of this arm's length. And my philosophy is I don't want, I don't want someone to get into this arm's length, especially a person who's possibly panicked. So they're going to have it out there. They can take it and, and grab it. I'm going to show a demonstration here of, of how to handle that. You okay, here we are demonstrating air shares. We're talking about the advantage of the long hose, right? Which uh, is creating distance on an air share. Talking about the self-defense of air shares. Now, Adam, a pretty affordable opponent when he's out of air, actually. You don't, you don't want to mess with that out of air, right? Yeah. So my idea is to keep an out of air recipient from, from getting in this zone, right? Because this is going to be my danger zone. So uh, if I'm happily working along here, I've got my regulator in my mouth, and uh, I see an Adam-like individual giving me an out of air signal. All right, what my goal is, I'm going to be grabbing my regulator and ducking the head before he gets into this space. So, and of course, then I'm going to plug myself back in here. Now, now Adam here has two choices. He can, you can take this regulator and be happy and stay there, in which case I'll, I'll still keep my arm here, right? And then I'm going to move to a hold, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, and, and hopefully, Adam is going to have no reason to go beyond this space into my inner sanctum, so to speak, because he's got the air here. He should be stopping for that. 
If he keeps coming, then I'm going to transform this to a stiff arm, right? And underwater, there's no way, you know, that, that Adam's going to get through that. Right? I'm just going to keep that on Adam's chest and let him keep pushing me back. So this is this is the idea, and for open water students, I drill a heck out of them with uh, with attacking them with air shares. And if they let me inside this space, I'm going to be all over them, right? All over them. Okay. So let's say uh, Adam accepts uh, his his kind gift of air. Right now, as you've all seen, right, there's always this controlling the, the recipient of the air share, and and your mileage may vary, right? If you know this person very well, they don't they look calm and composed. Maybe you're not going to have to control them, but let's say you have to control them, right? And let's say I've, I've got my spare in my mouth. I can't speak very well with it. And let's say, if, but yo, man, COVID man, don't do it. Oh, that's all right, all right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to control uh, Adam here. He's hard to control. I mean, he's a wire. I feel the wires in this guy, right? Now, uh, you might be tempted, so some people are going to, to grab like this, and of course I want to keep my left arm free for my inflator. Um, now, if I grab Adam below the elbow, Adam could do something like this, right? He just bend his elbow and come in. I mean, I can kind of push on him, but still, if he lets that elbow collapse and brings his butt no, no, around this way, right? Because I'm, I'm totally, there's nothing I could do about that. Now, um, what I learned from high school wrestling, which I, which I sucked at, is uh, you control the elbow, you control the body. So what I want to do is I want to grab Adam above the elbow, and then if he starts coming at me, all, I, all you have to do is push push that elbow. So pushing the elbow is going to be, I think, as impossible, you know, nothing's impossible, but as impossible as impossible can be uh, like that. And and doesn't matter how powerful or unpowerful I am, just it's just a leverage thing, right? And sometimes uh, it feels better like this, but you know this actually from the top gives you more leverage, but Again, your mileage may vary. Now, generally speaking, I'm going to do this with someone who I don't know. I'm going to control them just until we get the calmness and he's accepting the air. He's not bolting to the surface. He's not trying to attack me. Then if he or she is cool, then I'm going to you know, release myself, let that person do their thing. I'm going to do my thing and we're going to share either end the dive, finish their deco or whatever it is, proceed to an exit, whatever it is we need to end the dive. Then we could do it calmly with a lot of space. So this is why I like the long hose. What I don't like about a normal hose figuration. So let's say I just have a 40 inch hose. And then, so, okay, well, all right, let's say I'm breathing a regular hose and then I have something like a 40, a 36 or a 40 inch hose for Adam to breathe. So Adam is out of air, gives me a signal. I give him, imagine this is the yellow spare one that's dragging in in the sand usually, right? Kicking around the turtle's head and stuff. All right, I give that to him. And now, automatically, he's in my space. Automatically, no choice. I have no choice if I'm gonna give him air but to let him in my space. So this is one of the reasons why I favor the long hose, because I'm, I'm protecting that space. And then also, it's, it's a little bit problematic, more problematic, like us swimming together. Um, with that with that small regulator space, it's a little tougher. Naturally, if he's got this and I'm this, I mean, we've got all the, all the space in the world to, to swim out. So there's a lot of debate about whether long hose is a recreational or technical. I favor it for recreational, and this is why. Hey, I guess we're gonna be buddies on this dive. Daniel LaRusso. My friends call me daniel son. Whoa, just keep out of my way, LaRusso. We're gonna be what I like to call same ocean buddies. But, 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 my instructor, Mr. Miyagi, says... Oh, shut up about your instructor, butthead. Just stay clear unless I run low on air and need yours. Well, what are you talking about? Mr. Miyagi says we should manage our air by... Shut up, butthead. I don't need to manage anything except you. Your air is my air. Now, hand me my split fins. All right, LaRusso, I'm almost out of air. I'm coming for yours. Oh, wait, stay calm. Let's just surface peacefully. I don't want any trouble. No way, butthead. I'm almost out, and I'm coming for you. I'm going to be all up in your grill. Yeah, stay back. Be calm. No safe spaces for you, LaRusso. I'm out. Here I come, LaRusso. For those of you who watch some of my videos, there is an example here of one of my very few air shares and how it worked out with the long hose. 
the guy had deco left, like 15 or 20 minutes of deco, so we had to hang out together, and that long hose made it a very enjoyable hangout. I had a lot of space. Could you imagine, like, have a 40-inch hose, and I'm right there with someone that I don't know for 15 to 20 minutes? It's a pretty intense situation. One of the other disadvantages of, so a traditional rig or a short hose rig is, once you donate whatever you're donating, Usually those hoses are like a meter, like 36, 30 to 36 inches long, which means you've got another diver that maybe you don't know 30 to 36 inches away from you for a while until you get to back to a line or back to the surface or you know, God forbid this person has some deco left, like in my case, once someone did. It's a very close proximity and if that person is not stable and wants to do something that you don't want to do, oh, get to the surface! or oh, I'm panicked, woo! That's a pretty close proximity to have someone right in your grill who's not a happy diver. Not a good situation for me. Disadvantages of the long hose. When I'm wearing it, I don't know it's there. You see, it comes around and it gets tucked in your belt and if it's there, I, I don't know anything about it. I don't feel or experience anything. One thing that can happen annoying, if, if someone has, has is wearing ABC or does not have their belt tightened, that hose could keep coming out. And usually when I teach, I see that a great deal. The hose is out, the hose is out, the hose is out. And I have, I even have a, a signal for that. Tuck your hose, tuck your hose. Uh, generally, once people, you know, figure out that their belt needs to be tight and, you know, they keep it tucked. But that's one, you know, possible disadvantage. Other disadvantages. When you're carrying your gear around, there is a hose that's kind of hanging there. And that can be a minor hassle. Usually I tie it in a knot. Uh, to reduce that hassle, but you know it's it's something that's hanging around. Usually we have the bungee that's that's around your neck, and you know that's a, a very very minor inconvenience. Sometimes when you're taking your gear off, you forget that the bungee's there, so that that's a very very minor inconvenience. Usually I will choose a very good quality. Personally, I want two of the same or same quality regulators for my backup, which is here, and the one that I'm breathing. And if they're the same, I'll like alternate them, maybe take them off and, and switch them, maybe each time I service the regulator or something like that. But they are both very, very high quality regulators. If you look spare regulator performance, especially deep, you, you might be shocked at some of these cheaper octos at how poorly they might perform at 30 or 40 meters. It'd be a really bad situation to be on one of those possibly if you were at 40 meters. My main liking for the long hose is the safety of it, the distance. I don't want a diver to get inside inside my grill, <laughs> inside my distance, and the long hose is allowing me to get them what they want, the resource that they're urging for before they get into my personal space, and that way I can prevent any sort of drama that maybe was going to happen. Just like you fly a lot of airplanes, you see a lot of safety briefings of stuff that's never going to happen. None of us probably have been in a crashed airplane. None of us have probably had a water landing in an airplane. None of us have probably breathed, had the oxygen masks come down on an airplane. A lot of our lives is preparing for stuff that never happens. But that's what safety is all about. That's what risk management is all about. So for me, the long hose is a risk management tool. Uh, for something that very rarely happens. I have a handful of real air shares in my day, and one in particular, I'll link it here, I was really happy to have the long hose. Alrighty, if you're thinking about uh, moving to the long hose or wondering what a long hose configuration is, or if the long hose configuration might be for you, I hope this helped you out. I will see you on the beach.